I give you the honor. I give you the praise. I give you the glory. All of my days. I give you my life. How great or small. The love you show when you sent heaven's own to rescue me when I was lost in despair. Cause it was justice that said I should die. But your mercy stepped in. Dear kind and most gracious Heavenly Father, Father, you're the one who sits high and looks low, the one who knows our every thought and our every deed. Father, we come before you now giving thanks for having allowed us to arrive here safe and out of harm's way. We're mindful of those who might yet be on their way. We're asking for the traveling grace for them as well. We're mindful of those who are away from us at this time, traveling as well and worshiping as well. Praying that you would bring them back at the point time, next appointed time. We ask you, Father, for forgiveness of our many transgressions that we that befall us, Father, during our course of our lives and our weeks and days. Actually, remove anything I might 
prohibit us from being able to worship you in spirit and in truth. We're asking you, Heavenly Father, to bless all those, Father, who is our duty and we're bound to pray for, especially the members of the household of faith. Praying for the sick, the shut in, and the bereaved. Praying for the battle worn and the battle torn country over in U Ukraine. Praying for the one who's creating those atrocities towards them and praying that he would be stopped, if it be your will. We're praying, no doubt, Father, for those who are weak in heart, and those who are downtrodden, that they will look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, and be strengthened. We're asking you, Father, to bless the speaker of the hour who will be coming before us shortly, breaking unto us the bread of life. We know it is able to save our very soul. We ask you, Father, to bless him, bless his family, and bless all those gospel preachers who are standing boldly in the pool pit, preaching your word. Father, praying that some lost souls will come out of darkness into your marvelous light. We're praying, Heavenly Father, at this time that you will be with this service, that the service will come out to you as a sweet smelling saint, and that it would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Be with us until it is yours to call. Call. We thank you in the name of your darling son, Jesus Christ. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. When with the Savior we enter the glory land, won't it be wonderful there? In the troubles and cares of the story land, won't it be wonderful there? And won't it be wonderful there? I having no burdens to bear, joyously singing with heart bells all ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? Walking and talking with Christ the supernal one, won't it be wonderful there? Praising, adoring the matchless eternal one, won't it be wonderful there? And won't it be wonderful there? right here what do we really have in common but we're really going to be dealing with fellowship I won't keep you long I want to go over to first John chapter 1 and I want to pick up around about verse number 5 what do we really have in common you know you can have relationships with people for a long period of time right because you have something in common Right. Maybe you grew up on the same street, right. you went to the same elementary school, or Come you on, went man. to the same high school. Right. But as time goes on, and life happens to both you and that person, sometimes you realize, Brother Brown, that I don't really have nothing in common with you anymore. We don't really get along anymore because we don't have anything in common. You see, me and Brother Cox always got something in common, chicken. 
Right? Anytime, anytime it's a chicken involved, me and Brother Cox is happy. Right. We got something in common, right? right? And so what we're really trying to figure out in today's text is what do we have in common as brothers and sisters in the Lord? Because sometimes we can't get along, and it's a reason for that. Right. And sometimes we can't, we, we don't like to talk to one another, we don't like to fellowship with one another, and, that, and it's a reason for that. So we're going to look at this this morning. What do we really have in common? Now, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John, John is writing, or the writer is writing, to defend that Christ did come in the flesh. There were a group of believers who did not believe that the Spirit could inhabit this fleshly body. So John is, uh, you know, the writer is writing to say that, you know, Jesus was both man and God right. at the same time. That's right. And he's writing to uh, defend his deity, if you will. Well, right now, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. I'm reading New King James Version. It's not much of a difference um, in the New King James and the King James. Uh, the Bible says, this is the message which we have heard from him. And declare to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. At all. Let's stop right there. So the first thing we have to cover first is light, because that's what God is. Amen. He is light. And if I'm going to be in Christ, live in Christ, walk in Christ, that means i got to walk in the light. Amen. The, the, the problem with walking in the light is the light will expose me. Uh-huh. And, and y- y'all know what I'm saying. When you wake up in the morning and you go in the bathroom and you cut the light on, the first thing you see you. is you. Uh-huh. You don't see that toothpaste you left on the sink. You don't see the soap. You see yourself. And you see the blemishes that you have. You really see the ugly truth about yourself. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So when I started to walk in the light, I saw some things about Jonathan that I didn't want to recognize before. I'm not going to say I didn't know them. I didn't want to recognize them before. I saw how controlling I could be. I saw how manipulative I can be, how vindictive I can be, how troublesome I can be, how argumentative I can be. Don't look at me like that. Some of y'all argumentative, controlling, manipulative, and troublesome too. You preaching but when I was walking in the light, I said, Jonathan, you can't be all of these things and be a preacher. Let's get into it. That's a misconception. Because we, in the church of Christ, we throw out perfection instead of throwing out grace. Right. We throw out perfection instead of throwing out the cross. And when I saw all of those things that I possessed, I didn't want to walk in the light. I wanted to keep those bad things in the dark. Come on, preach. Because I can't be a preacher and deal with what I'm dealing with. Right? Preach. Wrong. Everybody, thank you, Stan. Everybody. All of us fall short as Christians and come short of the glory of God. That's right. We are all in the same bucket when it comes to God, how God views us. He views us all as servants. And our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags to God. Amen. And I ought to be wrestling. Now, it's, now you ought to con- now, if you're not wrestling with your sin, you got a problem. Uh-huh. But as long as you are wrestling with your sin, it's an everyday battle. It sure is. It's an everyday struggle. You know, last Sunday we sung for invitation. I'm a hard fighting soldier. Uh-huh. I remember, this is just briefly, I sung that song. Y'all know I grew up in the church. Right. And um, I was a song leader, and I sung Hard Fighting Soldier. And a sister came up to me, and she told me, uh, you ought to sing songs that are relatable to you. Uh-oh. And I said, okay. She said, because a lot of people say they hard fighting soldiers, but they not fighting hard. Uh-huh. And now I look at that. And the first thing that comes to my mind is, how dare you try to determine who's fighting hard right. and who isn't? Right. We all fighting hard. Right. I, you, just because you come to church with somebody and see them for one, a couple hours, that don't mean you know that person. Amen. And you don't know what people are battling every single day. 
Amen. Monday through Friday, externally, and then mentally. How dare you not think of, just worry about you being a hard fighting soldier. Amen. Preach, Johnny Dunn. But I'm here to tell you, we all hard fighting souls, because right now, in this social climate, Amen. there ain't no rest for the wicked or the righteous. Amen. Satan working on us and his own. Amen. Preach, Johnny Dunn. So, back to my text here. So, the Bible says that God is light. In him is no darkness at all. At all. Amen. But I got some darkness, Brother JB, in myself. Amen. And so, the Bible says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. Amen. And do not practice the truth. That's right. What is fellowship? It's a friendship. Friendship. So if I want to have friendship with God, I can't walk in darkness. Right. Right? I want to I make that clear. I can't live in darkness and have fellowship with God. Amen. If the Bible says if I do it like that. I'm not only lying, but I'm living a lie. Yes, sir. Okay, so how does that work? Because sis knows that I sin every day. Uh-huh. Sometimes I put the N in sin. Uh-huh. So how does that work? Walking in the light all the time and not living in darkness. The problem when Adam and Eve sinned was they hid. Mm -hmm. Say that again. Adam, where are you? He really should have said in sin. <laughs> How do you hide right. from God? Right. As if he didn't see you doing it anyway. Amen. As if he wasn't there while you were doing it. Because he's omnipresent everywhere at the same time. Right. And so sometimes we hide our sin from God. Right. As if God don't see it. Amen. But sometimes it also looks like God can't help us with it. Do y'all understand that? Mm -hmm. And so that can be frustrating to our father because if he can't help you with it, who can? Amen. If God can't, I've never met a sin that was too heavy that God couldn't lift it up. Amen. A problem that was too wide that God couldn't get his arm around it. Weight that was too much that God couldn't lift it off my shoulder. So sometimes I'm in darkness because I'm hiding my sin from God. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And what I'm trying to tell you is if you're going to walk in the light, you got to walk in the light with your good, your bad, and your ugly. Amen. All I'm trying to tell you is if you're going to wrestle with sin, I'd rather wrestle with my sin in the light. Amen. The problem is I try to come to church and put on my mask, uh -huh. put on my representative, right. and act like I don't wrestle with nothing. And when I leave here, I'm wrestling with it. And so I got one foot in and I got one foot out. Come on, preacher. But if I'm going to walk in the light and have, listen, fellowship. With God, I can't hide nothing from God. Amen. Because my God don't hide. Right. Amen. Amen. And so if I'm going to be a part of him and have a fellowship with him, I got to walk in the light as he is in the light. Yes, and then I can have friendship with the almighty God. Amen. Fellowship starts first with God. Amen. 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 And we always say, you know, you got to practice what you preach. That's true. But I'm trying to tell you, you also got to make sure that you bring to God whatever you're dealing with. It should never be secrets when it comes to you and God. Uh -huh. Because he is the one. He is the only one who can not only forgive you, but can break you free from what you're dealing with. Here's the, here's the truth. There's really a lot of addictions going on. Right. And, and, and they right here in the church, too. Don't think they're not. Right. People addicted to sex. Come on. Preacher. Folk addicted to pornography. Come on, preacher. Alcohol. Come on. Drugs. Yes, sir. Gambling. 
Yeah. It's a lot of addictions. Right. And that's just a few of them. Come on. Some people dealing with childhood trauma because they were touched as a child. Yeah. Great. And they battling with that right now. So how are you going to get help for that if God, if you don't talk to God about it? Amen. They met somebody. Amen. The, and you see, the first person you got to talk to, I'm going to get to the church in a second. But the first person that got to know about it is your father. Amen. We all sick in here. Yeah. We all sick in here. We all need help. Amen. So coming to church and acting like you don't need help, that's like going to the doctor and that's been your primary doctor for 20 years. He know you got high blood pressure. And you go in there and act like don't nothing, ain't nothing wrong with you. Uh -huh. You got to walk in the light as he is in the light. If you walk in darkness, the Bible says we lie. Do not practice the truth. I got to start living out the truth. Whatever it may be. Sometimes my truth is ugly. Yeah. But I'm going to live it though. You're never going to be able to call me out on my truth as if I'm running from stand. My truth. If it's mine, I'm going to hold it. Because God can give it. He can take it. He can take it from me. Now, the Bible says, but if we walk in the light, here we go. Here we go. As he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Now, 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 now. So here's how it goes. Fellowship is two parts. I'm almost done. Listen, fellowship with God first. Don't hide your sin. Right. Second part of fellowship is now when I come to church, I'm in the light. And I'm walking in the light as Brother Brown is walking in the light. So when Brother Brown asks for prayer for something that he's dealing with or that he's struggling with, I can go up to him and say, I'm struggling with it too. Amen. And because of that, I can have fellowship with my brother's and sisters. But problem is everybody faking. And when everybody faking, can't no healing go on. Amen. Ain't nobody talking about it, then it won't be talked about. Here's the problem. It's like this right now. You come get your church, I come get my church, and then let's go home. Uh-oh. God never intended for church to go that way. God never intended for fellowship to happen that way. Just come in and get you a little bit of Jesus. And run on out the door. Come on, preacher. Before the benediction is over, you running out the door. Yeah. Sometimes people run out the door too because they feel like you're going to judge them. Uh-huh. I feel like you're going to judge because I put my prayer request in five Sundays in a row. Uh-huh. And I feel like after church, you're going to come up and, and make me feel self-conscious about what I'm asking for prayer for. So I'm running out of here because I don't want to feel judged, but I want to feel loved. Amen. And so what happens is I go back out into the world and thinking that's some love. Uh -huh. And I fall right back into my trap that made me ask for prayer in the first place. Amen. But if I can't come to church and get no love, if I can't come to church and get no fellowship, Salute one another with the holy kids. The church of the Christ salute you. Now, let me be clear. I ain't saying run up and kiss nobody after church. Jeremy, still real. Keep your mask on. But it's okay to talk to somebody and shake somebody's head. And if they want to hug, it's okay for you to hug. It's okay for us to fellowship. We need that. Amen. It's, it's not just the word, but it's just it's, it's the word working in you and then you loving on your brother and sister when church is over. Amen. It's okay to pick up the phone during the week and call somebody and check on them. We need that. Amen. If I can't call Carol and tell her my mess, who can I call? I don't want to call nobody and talk to nobody and feel like I'm being judged. Right. I don't want to have to worry about you calling and talking about me to somebody else. You know, I don't want to have to be the running joke, run around the church for the next three Sundays because I got up and said I'm struggling with something. I want to feel at home here. Amen. This is a safe space here. Amen. Well, it ought to be. Yes, sir. It ought to be. I, you know, I don't want to get up and ask for prayer and by, next, and by, by, by Wednesday, people won't even go to Maypole calling me talking about what I asked for prayer for. Amen. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. 
That ain't fellowship. That's backbiting. Yeah. So if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we can have fellowship with one another. Why? As I stated before, now I'm not hiding. Amen. What do we really have in common? Sin. Sin. But listen at this. There's something bigger than that that we have in common. The Bible says, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Go back and read that again. The Bible says, and the blood of Jesus Christ. What do we have in common, brothers and sisters? If you've been baptized into the body of Christ, we have the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. In common with one another. And, and, I, and Sister Thurman, I need that blood. Amen. I need that blood today. I need his blood tomorrow. I need his blood Tuesday. I need his blood Wednesday. I need his blood. Th I need the blood of Christ on a daily basis. Amen. It's cleansing me on a daily basis. Amen. And sometimes we can come to church and forget that no matter what goes on between me and you, we share something in common, and that's the blood. Amen. And this blood is, in fact, thicker than water. Amen. It will last a lifetime. His blood can cover not just me, but my children. Not just my children, but my wife. Not just my wife, but my mother. Not just my mother. But y'all understand? Amen. I need the blood. You need the blood. You need the blood. You, that's why the song says, I know it was the blood. Amen. I know it was the blood. Amen. Because he died for my sins. Right. It was the atonement. For my sin. That's right. And his blood keeps on atoning for my sins, mm. even until this day. Amen. And so when you come to church and you're looking to have fellowship with your brothers and sisters, the first thing you must understand and recognize is fellowship has to start with God. Amen. If I'm hiding from God, I'm going to hide from y'all. Does that make sense? Amen. Then also, once you realize that you can't hide from God, but you deal with your sin in the light, that means I don't hide from God. I'm, I'm telling you the truth, Lord, about what I'm battling with. I'm dealing with it in the light. See, when I deal with my sin in the light, then I can come to church, and it's easier for me to fellowship. Amen. Because I've already been dealing with it with God. And then when I can deal with it with God and fellowship in the light with God, then I can come to church and I can sit next to Brother Buford, even though I know he's struggling. I can sit next to Brother Brad, even though I know he's struggling. And then you know what? It's no judgment there because no matter what you're struggling with or what I'm struggling with, the point is we all struggling. Amen. And then I get fellowship with one another. And then we can lift one another up. We can strengthen one another. We can pray for one another. We can call one another. We can talk to one another. We can stay at the church a little while. We can, y'all hear what I'm saying to you? Amen. And then we can be happy about it because we're so glad to have the blood. Amen. We're so glad to have the blood of Jesus Christ cleansing us every day. And that's something to shout about. Amen. That's something to say amen about because if it wasn't for the blood, I don't know where I'd be. Amen. And the Bible says, um, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And some people say, well, I never said I didn't have no sin, Brother John. You didn't have to say it. Your behavior demonstrates that as such. Come on, preacher. You didn't have to say that. How you behave acts like you don't sin. You know what? I don't leave the house, Brother Johnson. You ain't got to you ain't got to leave the house to sin. Amen. Sin <laughs> in the house. Preach, Johnson. You sure don't. You can be watching the TV and sin. Come on, preacher. You can pick up that phone and sin. Come on, preacher. You can just think something and sin. So I, and there's no such thing as little sin or big sin. That's all categorized as sin. Amen. And so, if we say that we have no sin, uh -huh. you're doing nothing but lying to yourself. That's right. And the Bible says the truth is not in us. Come on. If we confess our sins, mm -hmm. 
Hmm. He is faithful and just. God is more faithful to me than I've been to God. Amen. That's a fact. That's right. That's why the Bible says, hold, I mean, the song says, hold to God's unchanging hand. That's right. Because if I ever let go of his hand, it wasn't because he let go. It was because I let go. That's right. God has been more faithful to all of us than we have been to God. That's right. But he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. That's why. I mean, I don't have a problem with people asking for prayer for other people. Right. I think sometimes that's needed uh, because people are really struggling. But we sometimes we never ask for prayer for ourselves. Right. Right. It's a problem in the church when there's always the same people asking for prayer, and we got a hundred people in here. Amen. Three. Somebody lying. You don't sin. You don't. You don't fall short. Come on now. I don't sin like that. Uh oh. Hey. Listen. You don't know what a young person seeing you ask for prayer will do for their life. Amen. And I'm not saying you have to be descriptive, but just knowing that sister so and so sin can open my mind to be more open to God. You, I'm just trying to tell you, you don't know what your testimony will really do for somebody. That's right. When we can be honest, that's what I'm saying, when we come to church, we, all of us should, I mean, it should be more of us asking for prayer. Come on, preacher. It's a problem when the church ain't baptized and don't nobody need prayer. Great. Oh, Lord. Something wrong with that hospital. That's right. Amen. If we, and I'm telling you, the Bible says that if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. You can't always have a complaint, but never a request for prayer. Amen. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Here's the kicker. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. And we know one thing, that God can't do what? God can't lie. God can't lie. God can't fail. And if we act like we don't have no sin, we make him out to be a liar. And God does not lie. As I close this text, I want to go over to the second chapter. Just drop down to the second chapter and look at verse number nine. So here's the, here's the, here's the end of it. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. Amen. Because there's no way I can continue that grudge or hold that grudge or hold that hatred for you and walk in the light with Jesus Christ. Come on. If Christ held a grudge against me, forget making it to heaven, I wouldn't be here right now. Amen. So the Bible says if you hate your brother, you in darkness, even right now. He who loves his brother abides in the light. Amen. And there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. So oftentimes we'll say that the light is blinded, but it is the light that will light up a path. And show you where you need to go. It's the darkness that can be blinding. Because in that is where you stumble. Because you really cannot see. Amen. So what do we really have in common brothers and sisters? We have the blood of Christ in common. And, there, and when we realize that. And when we really recognize that fellowship with God comes first. Then we can have fellowship with ourselves. And then we can truly see that Christ has brought all of us. Collectively, a mighty long way. There's no reason for me to hate you. There's no reason for me to act like I don't love you. I love you. I may not like you all the time. I love you though. Amen. I don't like that if I don't get into the kitchen soon enough, Brother Cox gonna get the chicken all gone. Amen. But I love him. Amen. And I know that if I don't love him, if I can't learn to love him, I'm doing nothing but make myself stumble. That's right. 
We always talk about how you can be a stumbling block to somebody else. Let's talk about how you can be a stumbling block to yourself. Amen. Walking in the light is his in the light. Listen, if you need prayer today, because fellowship has been a problem for you, because of your, 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 your viewpoint or how you feel about someone, we're going to pray for you. We're going to get the prayer cards ready right now. Amen. If you're here today and you have a problem that you're battling with, but you really haven't taken it to God, now's your opportunity. Because you don't have to suffer in silence. And you don't have to deal with that by yourself. So we're going to pray for you. And if you're here this morning and, and you don't got some love for some of us, we're going to pray for you as well. Because all of that is heavy, heavy stuff. But I just feel like God can change it even today. Amen. It's never about if God can. It's only about if we believe. Amen. 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 And if you need to be baptized this morning, that's, 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 that's so important because you've already heard the word. And you have to believe it now and be ready to repent and confess that Christ is the Son of God and will baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the remission of your sins and that blood that we talked about. You can experience what it's like because being a Christian is like walking around in a white suit. Amen. Every day it get dirty. Amen. And it's staying the cleaners, and I need the blood to cleanse me on a daily basis. That's right. Every day something getting on my suit. Every day I'm in some sin. Every day I'm thinking new things. So I'm going to need the blood. Amen. I'm going to need the blood. I'm going to need the grace. I'm going to need the mercy. That's I can't right. make it without it. We want everybody to stand at this time as we all sing the Savior's invitation. Won't you come? Word of the land of joy and peace and wonderful life. Right now is the time for our communion. We take this time to obey the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When he said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. He left this for us to partake of on the first day of the week. That we might remember the sacrifice that he made on Calvary. 
We need to be reminded because we all are so forgetful. We need to be reminded how he suffered. And we need to be reminded that he suffered because he loved us. We need to be reminded of his sacrificing his dignity. But we also need to be reminded that he made that sacrifice because he loved us. We need to be reminded that he shed his precious blood for the forgiveness of our sins. We also need to be reminded that he shed that blood because he loved us. Jesus said, no man loves anybody like the man who lays down his life for his friends. Jesus laid down his life for us. Won't you be a friend to Jesus? I invite your mind back to Calvary as we partake of this bread and this cup. Let us bow. Dear God, our Father in heaven, we're so thankful. We're so very thankful that you loved us enough to give us your son, Jesus, to die for our sins. Lord, we know, we know that we could never repay you, but we thank you for loving us. Father, we ask at this time, if it's your will, that you would help us to focus our minds on the love that was shown for us when Jesus went to the cross. We pray that you would bless us as we partake of this bread and of this cup, his broken body and shed blood, that we will do it in a way that is pleasing in your sight. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you are doing. And we thank you for what you yet will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may now take the bread. And now the cup. It is also now time that we give back to the Lord as he commanded. The tenth of all that we receive belongs to the Lord. It would be ungrateful for us to receive the bounty of a, a paycheck or social security or retirement pension or even unemployment or public aid and not give back to the Lord a portion of that that he has given to us. God loves a cheerful giver. And we have a number of ways that you may give back and honor God with your substance. One, you may give online. You may go to our website, www.mapoavcoc.org. Click on the online giving button and make your, give your offering electronically. Or you may put it in the mail, send it to the building, and we will make sure that your collection is attributed to your account. The address is there on the screen and uh, you may send that to the church or if you so desire you may come by the building and drop it off with someone here and we will make sure that your collection is given but we want you to know that COVID or no COVID the tithe still belongs to the Lord we know that God is continuing to bless us all you got to do is look around God is still blessing us amidst this pandemic and we need to show our gratitude and our obedience by giving back to him a portion of that that he has given to us. God bless you.
Just things that say 